Are you alive? We are. And welcome to the program. It's another edition of Behind the Law right here on Bud 94.1. Thank you for spending some of your evenings here with us on our favorite radio station. Join us every single weeknight, 8 o'clock p.m. Bud 94.1. Also, you can interact with us at 4 o'clock or thereabouts. Uh, follow us at Behind the Law Radio Instagram, Facebook, uh, and we can ask us any questions right there as well. The beautiful Brianna, who's now actually on the scene today... We'll respond to them, write a little message, and uh, we will uh, interact with you right there. We're laughing For, at me now. Uh, why, why are we laughing now? Because uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> are you an idiot? Quite, quite frankly. So all, all of a sudden, Mick Dolan shows up one day yesterday wearing nice clothing, tucked in shirt, and now everyone's calling him an idiot. What happened, Brianna? Well, I'm back what? to normal now. I know, well, no. I mean, you're still a good buddy, but what happened, Brianna? I don't know. I thought you were a silver cowboy. Yeah, what, what happened? And you, you do have a, a pink microphone, <laughs> Mick Dolan. Yeah, no I know. doubt about that. Oh, there's <laughs> you, another one. All you right. do have a pink mic. Anyway, listen. Three two. Pink. What's in a color? Three two one two eight two one zero five five for any questions that you may have. Joining me as always, my good friend and Orlando radio legend. He's the face of Bud ninety four one. His name Mick Dolan. Mick, how are you, sir? Good. So you do have a peak microphone today. I can't help but notice. So uh, that means... I don't want to get too close to it. That means that Ali <laughs> McCarroll, Ali Mack, my co-host, is not here today. I know. Anyone know where she is? Because here's what I've heard. Here is the latest report mm -hmm. that she told me via email mm -hmm. that she was going to be late or not here because she was mm -hmm. in Kissimmee. Mm -hmm. I was like, look, if you're going... Trust me, if you're ever going to be late, don't email me. I get thousands of emails right. a day. Right. Uh, I didn't see your email. How I, You really think I saw her email way yet? Way down on the list. So, uh, Brianna, yeah. what is the official statement from Allie Mack? Do you know? Uh, yes. The official statement is that she did inform you via email that I actually have in my possession right here. Please talk right into the microphone. She she did send you an email. Okay. She did. Yeah. So you and saw the email. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking, looking at the email. At it right now. Yeah. Were you CC'd on the email? Because I, how am I, I, I supposed not, to know? I was not, but I see that it was sent to you. <laughs> well, how do you know? You, you're stalking my emails? Well, hang on there. First of all, I okay. do have access to your emails, but okay. that's besides the point. Well, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's real There's weird. Another thing you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I like this. It's too Whoa, late. Uh, Technology. So you, you actually can track my own emails, too? Yeah. We have to keep an eye on Somebody you. has to. I mean, really. Tell this is something I did not know that I'm learning right now on the show. So you see every email that I get as well. Hmm. Yeah. How do you get them? I have your username and password. <laughs> what the? Did you, did, did you, you get Did you know this? No. I didn't know that. Now, Brianna, you my email? Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you better check. Perhaps. This is unbelievable. That's now, this, this is groundbreaking is, news. That's why I, I had so many new, news articles to get to today, but apparently... <laughs> we're just going to settle on We're this. just talking about emails. <laughs> apparently, this is out of control. How do you have access to my email? Because you gave me your password to your email, Justin. When? When did I do that? Oh, the second day I got here? I don't know. Unbelievable. She's even got Hillary Clinton's email. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. I know where those are at. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Allie the Mack Al Al so Allie Mac said she was not going to be here today or was going to be late. Which one is it? Because I still haven't seen the email. I don't know. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> now, so now you're going to scroll through my email. <laughs> We're checking. This is my Somebody's email. got to. <laughs> why, why do I feel so violated right now, Mick? I don't know. It's... It, Justin. What? Everybody knows everything. About days. everyone? Yeah. I guess so. I, I, mean, I don't know. It's probably on the internet. It's funny because so, like, he's concerned about the emails. I also have all of his credit card numbers. And, <laughs> and I feel like that's something to actually be concerned no, about. I'm fine that's with that because I trust you. <laughs> Is that like I have that, to log into your Amazon. Like that's there, dangerous. There, there, there's something <laughs> different about, okay, so we work together. So you have the, you Especially know, we have, me. we have to buy lights. We have to buy things for the show. We get that. Oh. So you have to have my credit card information. That access to my email is like a whole other thing. Is it? I mean, are you the one that uh, shut down my Snapchat account? Maybe. Because someone did. Somebody should have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're just trying to help you out here, man. But, you start getting is questions. that a confession, Mick? <laughs> getting questions is like, wait a minute. What's this? Ay, What's ay, this? Ay. Well, we, we have a very special guest today, by the way. And, uh, and this is okay. an interesting show. And. There are some times when we have programs together, McDowell and I, you know, sometimes I'll ask a question in advance and say, yeah, what are we talking about? But this one, when I saw this one pop up, I said, I don't want to know anything. I really don't want to know anything in advance because it seems so interesting to me. 
I also have six animals at my home. Oh, buddy. I have three dogs. This is your customer, sir. And three right cats here. at my it's house. It's music to my ears. Oh, so buddy. we invited our good friend, Mike Bagley of E-Static Odor Control in today. Welcome to the show, Mike. How are you? Thank you. Good. How are you? This is Mick. This is Brianna. Sorry about the, you know, the little... Hey, you stalking. gotta have your email situation <laughs> taken care of, uh, I understand. Obviously, you have some work to they do. Can't, they can't do anything about your emails. Freshen them up, freshen them up a little bit. It's really quite unbelievable but to me better. that it's, uh, it's happening this way. Cause that is happening this way. <laughs> It is. It's crazy. I didn't know you read my emails. I didn't know. I that. don't just read your emails. So, so how did you read that one? She forwarded this one to me. Oh, yeah. So, well, you have to tell me that. So, well, I so, did. So, so, so really, he was all concerned over nothing. Oh, he thought I went through his emails. I didn't go through their emails. Oh, I thought. But you do I have access. Could. I'm able to see she your emails. Could. So that, but I have that better hasn't things to away. do with my time. I thought you were actually going through my emails and saw the email that she sent me. Oh no, I didn't do okay. that. So it's an invasion of privacy. Okay, so what fine. about the other emails? That <laughs> well, like, as his emails come in, I mean, yeah. I see them, but I don't read okay. your emails. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, they don't end in dysfunction, McDonald, no. if you know what I mean. I, I got you. All right? Unless Different I have group, to buddy. read his emails, then I'll read your emails to find things. But other than that, no. All right, fine. We're good. I'm off the hook. So do we have an official response? Like, why isn't she here? No. She I, is, I, uh, she's I, working at Kissimmee, you okay. know, because Ali Mack... With Ali Mac Consulting, does a lot of social media she marketing does move around for okay. tons of companies, yeah. and there's a local company out in Kissimmee that needs her help. And we need to I get mean, her a helicopter. I mean, she, I mean, do she they is. need help with emails? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. It's That's my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> maybe email security. Maybe. Said the wrong person. <laughs> it may be email security. I'll help or, them. <laughs> or, or credit card security at this point. Because we're uh, learning a lot today. I tell yeah, you. My yeah. CFO is Hillary Clinton, uh, yeah. so we'll. Right, <laughs> we, we Mike, my, my, my talk to me it, it, right out of the box. I know what you do. You guys do odor control. I know that's what you do. But what is odor control? I mean, I don't even know. What, what, what is that? What does that mean? So, so first I want to say thanks for referring to me as special. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Really? But I'll let that slide. Um, but, uh, yeah, so f as far as odor control, we, um, there's a lot of different things when your house might smell a little funky. Mm. Um, yes. When we go in, it's normally when there's a house on the market that's having a hard time coming off of the market. It's listed. There's interest from buyers, but there's a pet odor. There's cigarette smell. There's strong food odors. And we, we were talking before we came on, you know, if you have a bad curb appeal and the curb appeal just isn't great, you can fix that. When you walk into a home and the smell hits you, mm. A lot of people just turn around and walk right back out. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's when we get the call yeah. when, and I've had a few where um, the pet smell was just extremely noticeable mm. and the selling agent couldn't even get to the negotiating phase of the deal because yeah. people would just turn around and walk back out. Right. So we went in, sprayed the house. It usually takes four, 3,000 square foot home. We can usually, we're usually done in about an hour. Um, we use an antimicrobial spray. And secondly, we then apply a fragrance smell. It's all botanically based, environmentally safe. So it's safe for kids, for pets, um, and you human can, consumption. You can do Somebody this. like me with, as with asthma, I'm fine spraying the, the spray without any effects. So you can do this without replacing the carpet? Correct. Or, or you yep. know, major and, repairs and stuff. And because it's, it's environmentally safe and botanically based, we can spray, if there's um, drapes, we can spray drapes. If there's furniture in the house, we can spray the furniture. We, if there's a food smell and it's very prevalent in the kitchen, we can go in and spray the outside of the cupboards, for example, um, to help get rid of that smell. So all of our audience right now is asking the same question. And so I will ask the obvious question. How in the world do we go from regular job, college, to I'm going to kill the smells in your house? <laughs> How do we do that? How does that happen? So first thing, I have a very sensitive respiratory system, let's call it. Okay, so yeah. any smell, especially any type of smoke, whether it's cigarette smoke or when we have the wildfires, and you know you walk outside and yeah. you get that wildfire smell or it comes through the air conditioning, um, that will aggravate my sinuses like nothing. Like instantly I get a, almost a sinus infection. So I understand when people call and they say, hey, I have a very sensitive nose, a very sensitive smell, can you help me out? So that's the primary reason. I understand what that's like. And 
when my, we moved to Tampa about a year and a half ago, my family and I, and we'd walk into homes. And when you do, even if it's a musty smell, mm-hmm. the instant, even if it's not overpowering, instantly you think, where is that coming from? How yeah. do I get rid of it? Yeah. Can I get rid of it? Well, yeah. it, it puts the doubt in your mind. You go, right. mm, you know, I like this house, but Dad, what is that smell? And the owner's probably not going to be able to tell you. Yeah. To be honest, uh, right. I mean, he might not want to tell you. I don't know. And Did you? Like you can just ask a home inspector. Hey, can you find that smell? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think that shows up on the home inspection at all. And I and I think that a lot of questions that we have are are threefold. Number one is, does our house smell? Number two is, are are we sort of numb to it because we live in yeah, said house? It. And number three, does it affect our home value? And I think those are the three questions that we should ask of our good friend Mike Bagley of E-Static Odor Control right on the other side of this break is behind the law. Bud, 94.1. The real estate agent would be the the go-to on that. So do you get hired mostly by realtors? So it's It's mostly mostly real estate. Yeah, because of the price point. We have Grubhub. Yeah, that's how we have Grubhub. Welcome back to the program. It's Behind the Law, Bud 94.1. My name is Justin Clark, joined by Orlando Radio legend, the face of this station, Mick Dolan. Mick, how are you, sir? I'm good. Brianna is here also. She's typing away. I don't know who she's talking to, but who are you talking to? Who are you typing with? Who, like, are Our you... listeners. Okay. You promise? See, she's I behind promise. the You're scenes. You're not emailing, you I hope, through my email the... account. <laughs> you don't promise, this. Justin. You don't. Uh, well, no, she's she's giving them all your email. All right. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. And I'm just filling up our Amazon shopping cart. <laughs> oh, great. Just what I need. She has my credit card information. She already uh, admitted earlier. As a as bonus well. today. Uh, yeah, yeah. A credit happy, card. Ha- <laughs> happy holidays to you. Allie Mack is actually on her way a little bit late today. No big deal. She emailed me. But here's the deal. Look, I get a lot of emails. I, I mean, I just I didn't get it in time. I'm sorry. So tell Allie Mack I am. I understand she did tell us she was going to be late. I get it. Okay, Allie She Mack. should have texted you. Ah. I mean, you... Even, even that, I get a lot of those, too. Sometimes it won't get to me. The best way to get to me is, like, call Brianna and say, Brianna, <laughs> go shake Justin and let him know I'm going to be late. I mean, that's the best way to get to me. It's, try, it's, try to get his attention. Yeah, it's, it's very hard here in, in my little run. If you have any questions, 321-282-1055. The website, youhavepower.com. Watch the TV show, if you would. It's Behind the Law on TV this Sunday and every Sunday, 10 a.m. TV 27. And, of course, listen, listen to us, 8 p.m., Bud 94.1. And if you want to, please follow us at Behind the Law Radio about 4 o'clock every day. You can interact with us right there. Ask us questions there. Brianna is actually on the scene here today, and we'll respond to them on the air. Mick Dolan, this is a great guest, I think, today, because I, I didn't well, know I didn't know this sort of company existed. We have a lot of stink. <laughs> a lot we need of stink to deal in with. the air today that we got to deal yeah, with somehow. We invited exactly. Mike Bagley to figure out how to deal with our odors. Odors are a problem, I think. So yeah, here, here's what happened to me last night. I Mick, I don't think you've been to my house yet, but we have three dogs, three cats. That's a lot of animals, number it one, is, right? Is. That's, a a lot. that's not even counting the horse that's actually thankfully at the barn. <clears throat> three dogs, three cats. That's, that's a, a local zoo. That's like a local zoo. That's yeah. a Heathrow zoo for sure. I mean, that's a zoo in Heathrow. And so I almost think that when I walk in sometimes, I'm like, I might smell a little something, but maybe you get numb to it. I mean, is there a way, Mike Bagley, by the way, e-static odor control. I was embarrassed because we had people over last night, Mick. And I was like... Peely, can you light some candles? Because I'm really afraid that it might smell like animal in here. Yeah. 
And she's, you know, rightfully so. She she lit some candles up, and it smelled good, like candles. Mm-hmm. But had she not, it might have smelled like the animals. I don't know. I, Mike, do we get numb to the actual odors of our own house or not? I think you can. Now, I have a four-year-old who were, he's pretty much potty trained, but will still have some accidents at night. Now, that smell. Yeah. I'm not going to go into detail. <laughs> you don't I mean, need to. It gets to. to the point to where my wife's like, babe, can you spray a little bit of the spray on the mattress, please? Well, at least um, she knows who to call on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you've got the product, you know. But um, so there are some, sometimes it's a little more subtle than that. I mean, that's a very obvious smell. Yeah. But, um, you know, we rescued our dog about a year ago. And that transition <clears throat> after a rescue pet, she had some accidents in the house. Unfortunately, we were able to... I mean, it took so much time and effort and going through different products and steam vacuuming the carpet and trying to do everything we could while she was going through that transition period um, to try to not smell like a local zoo when people walked in. But I think some things become a little more subtle, like food smells. Um, If you have ethnic food, my wife's from the Philippines, so there's a lot of seafood being cooked in the house. We may not notice it now, but one day when the house goes on the market... Yeah. Who knows what the house is going to smell like to somebody who walks in. So. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, your best client would be, though, who? I mean, is your best client a, a real estate agent who is, is trying to sell a house and the house had some mold recently and it smells terrible? I mean, what what is your client at eStatic? Like, what is your client that you're really focused on? So right now, um, starting out the business, I've been in the Tampa area for about two months and really trying to penetrate the real estate market. Um, we find that the homes will sit on the market much longer if they do have a foul odor to them. So the house, somebody obviously is eager to sell their home and can't, maybe that, like to your point, they didn't realize that the smells existed, but somebody else who walks in, oh, yeah. Hey, there's a smell here. What do we, we got to do something about it? Um, and I have, um, I had a phone call last week, the same exact situation smells like cats. And so what, <laughs> And no, it wasn't your house. Hey, yeah, um, it might have been, man, actually. <laughs> but um, Give they're me the address putting later. It into, definitely could have been my place. They have buyers that want to buy this house, but they don't. They want the smell to be gone before they move in, obviously. So they're writing us into the contract that the sellers will pay for the services before the buyers move in. Can a house smell? Like, Let's say that someone is trying to sell a home. They move all of their stuff out, all the furniture, all the beds, all the mattresses. It's literally just a house now, McDonald, right? There is no furniture left whatsoever. Can a, a, a smell really permeate through that home even when the furniture is gone? Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Well, it can stick with the furniture, too, can it? So it may be well, the I'm furniture. saying the furniture's out of there. No, but I mean, yeah. when you take the furniture out, oh, the furniture yeah. still smells. Absolutely. Yeah. But it can be in the walls. No, yeah. really? Even in a, in a home that may be mostly tile, if you have somebody who smokes heavily in the home, it'll absorb into the walls. Mm. The trick... And I've learned a lot since trying to get into the real estate market with this business is a lot of places or a lot of people may or may not, may or may not repaint the house yeah. to try to cover up the <laughs> cigarette smoke or food smells. I think that's funny. You paint over the cigarette smell. <laughs> well, which then it comes back in three to six months. And, yeah. you're, and then it, even, become, even it doesn't if, become the seller's problem. Yeah. Now it's the buyer's problem who just recently bought a new home. And, and, and new to them, at least. And now that smell is coming back through the walls three to six wouldn't months kills later. Wouldn't uh, kills that kills the, the primer? Wouldn't that take care of something like it that? It hides it. It masks it. Kind of. It's almost like a, a Febreze tactic. You, well, know, is you it, go <laughs> in, Febreze the house, smells great for a showing. The yeah. next day, smells like it did before. So yeah. when we come in, we can, because like I said before, it, what we use is environmentally safe, botanically based. It's made out of thyme leaves. So we can actually spray the walls and we've sprayed walls, and the tobacco starts pouring down the paint. And Whoa, we, wow. I take a Swiffer with me, Swiffer the walls. Are you And really? uh, with the antimicrobial, it'll pull out so, crazy so amounts of different things. So the smoke has actually gotten into yeah, the wall. Yeah, it permeates, yeah, yeah. Into the wall. Wow, well, I, I mean, what that. percentage of people do you think really <clears throat> smoke in their house anymore? Because I, my dad used to, I know. That was like the last guy I really saw smoke in the house. But I've had roommates that did. Still? Like, h- still how long well, ago? Well, not, no, no. That was, this was a while ago. Uh, well, nobody smokes in the house now. So now when you're hired, do you actually see people still smoking in the home? There, there are a fair amount of people that still smoke in their homes, and even vehicles. It was more of a surprise to me until i started looking in before i decided to 
open the business, um, talked to a lot of my real estate friends about, is this an issue or not? Yeah. And it actually is an issue. Yeah. Smoke, <clears throat> it's mostly smoke, pet smells, and food odors. What but, about the I car? Was surprised. What about the car? Do you do cars? Yeah, we do vehicles. Oh, Ooh, now we're well. talking. And I didn't we know we about this vehicle yeah. thing. All right. So I find it very reasonable for people to smoke cigarettes in their car. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you know you you roll down the window, yeah, I'm, the, not, I'm not saying I smoke cigarettes or smoke in the car, period. But I, I, that seems more rational to me than smoking in the house. Mm-hmm. You smoke in the house, like well, it's not going anywhere. In the car, you roll down the window, blow it out. But I imagine there's some residual stink mm-hmm. there. Oh, yeah. How in the world can you guys help the car smell as well? So we, it's the same solution that we use in homes and even apartments, hotels, wherever we may be spraying. We'll spray through the HVAC system of the car while the car's running, yeah. spray through the air intake, and also hit the fabrics, hit, um, even if it's leather seats, the smells can absorb into the leather as well. So we'll spray the seats, any upholstery, we'll spray that as well. It's okay for leather. Yep. 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 It's okay for, it's all, it's okay for any type of material because of um, its nature. So, um so, for example, of course I wanted to test it out, right? And my, we don't smoke, and but we do have three kids. And my kids go to a charter school that's about 20 minutes away from the house. There's a lot of neighborhood kids that go to this charter school as well. Mm-hmm. And we have an eight-passenger pilot. So <laughs> do the math, right? Yeah. So and they're, they're liable to, to leave a few calling cards uh, yeah, in the, in the yeah. car. Yeah. So my wife hauls seven kids to school in the morning and brings them home in the evening. And so needless to say, it doesn't take much to get that car Stinking. A, a little funky. <laughs> so I sprayed the I sprayed the pilot and right before Thanksgiving, you can still still go into the pilot and there's still a vague smell of the fragrant smell of the solution that's left. Wow. And this is after what are we talking now? Th- four weeks or so of hauling so many kids back and forth. And not just that, again, going back to my four year old who leaves all sorts of surprises sure. everywhere. Um I'm a there's Places in that pilot I don't even know existed. I was pulling wrappers and goldfish. <laughs> oh, and I know. Out. I know all about goldfish. You'll uh, find you'll find the Chick Fil A. I know all about Chick Fil A. Please, fries and chicken nuggets stashed in place. I don't, I don't know how long they've been there, but of course it adds to the smell. And again, this has been going on repetitive behavior for the last four weeks, and the the pilot still smells fairly fresh. So, so, so when Mike Bagley, by the way, uh, e static odor control. When you said to your wife, "Hey, wife, I love you." <laughs> I'm gonna not start, necessarily in those words. I, I'm gonna start an odor control biz. What did she say? Probably the same advice when um, I talked to her right before the show. Don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, after 14 years of marriage, so yeah. that's now you know my encouragement yeah. to go out and do a good job. Don't screw it up. So um, we had a discussion before, and I won't go into the details or anything. But no, you know, please do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nighttime. <laughs> Um, so I've tried a few Wondrous. things, entrepreneurial ideas before they didn't work out, but I feel now with, um, years of hospital, I worked at a, um, large hospital out here when we lived in Orlando for 10 years in operations, um, finished my master's in business about three years ago. And so I feel like now I have the education, I have the experience behind me to where I can start a business and be yeah. successful at it. Before the other failures, I attribute, attribute it to the lack of knowledge, lack of education, mm-hmm. trying something. So I've always wanted to work for myself, but didn't really have the foundation to do so. Makes sense. Does your house stink? And how do you know if it does? Because maybe you become numb to it. Let's figure out the answer to that question in the next half hour right here. I'm behind the law on Bud 941. All right. <clears throat> All right, what big picture stuff am I missing?
Ready? Uh, welcome back to the show. It is Behind the Law. Bud, 94.1, Justin Clark, joining you as we do every single weeknight, 8 o'clock p.m. on our favorite radio station. To my left, my good friend, he's also the face of this station. And he is an Orlando is, radio scary. legend. His name is Mick Dolan. Mick Dolan, how are you, sir? I'm good. Even yesterday, and I've told you this since I first met you a year and a half ago, when we yeah, we kind of started this station together in a lot of ways. Someone who walked out of here after the show, I heard him. I thought I had to hear him because, you know, my show, you know, folks on me, as, as they were walking out there, Mick, I know I know you from somewhere. I, I just know you're like that radio guy. You're, you're Mick Dolan, right? You're like, yeah, I'm Mick Dolan. <laughs> you remember that yesterday? Get, yeah. Who was that? Who are we talking Peter. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was all yeah. into you. I heard that. The podcast. Don't think I missed that. Yeah. I mean, you are, and I call you Orlando Radio Legend because you're an Orlando Radio Legend. But I'm just living the dream. That's I know. You've I'm had doing. a good time, I haven't mean, you? It doesn't matter what the title is. Do you feel like your life is somewhat fulfilling? I mean, if you had a good time. Oh, absolutely. You had a great time. I, if I could remember all of it, it'd be even better. <laughs> oh, come on. You know what I mean. I mean, yeah, no, I do. Are you happy with the, you know, there, there are pivotal. I am blessed. There are pivotal moments in life. Yeah. And, and you took one back in, in Kansas City even someday. And, no, University of Kansas. And, and, and you said, I'm going to do this radio thing. Well, I couldn't figure out how to get a job right. without working too hard. Right. So uh, I saw the, the opportunity, and there you go. How do you feel about the changes in the radio world? Because, look, the changes now, I, I, I don't know if we feel like the changes in the radio world are so pervasive right now because we're in right now, or if they just are crazy changes. Well, it all changed in the 90s, the mid-90s, when the, it, they deregulated the industry. They allowed more companies to buy more stations. Mm -hmm. And so big companies bought up all the little guys. Right. And it was supposed to bring variety to radio, but it didn't work out that way. No, I mean, a total opposite, actually. Because they're all looking at the bottom line. And yep. the mom and pops that were there before that really cared, they're, they're not there anymore. So, so the incredibly talented radio guys that you worked with, let's say in 1988, right? Okay. Like, oh, my God, that guy is so talented. Yeah. What are some other jobs you've seen them had to work because of conglomeration of radio stations? Well, my buddy Pat Lynch. Uh, what who's, is he doing? He's over at JRR yeah. now. Okay. Well, he, he, had a, he got a radio job, though. No, but he was fired. Okay. And had to sit out. At least once, out, right? At, yeah. at least once. Had to sit out a few years. And he managed what did he a, do? He managed a 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that, you know, was not right. exactly a fun job. I mean, it's a, sort of just a weird thing because you go from being on the radio talking to you know probably 20 30 thousand people every single morning you know and then they they come in one day they're like oh by the way we sold the station yeah now we're now we're owned by this guy this guy this guy we're all one big joint team here oh, oh by the way you're fired yeah. and this happens in radio it's crazy it's the yeah. craziest thing in the world oh or by the way we're not even replacing you with another talking person. It's We're a robot. It's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and so what other jobs have you seen radio guys been replaced? Or, I'm sorry, not replaced with a robot, but they went to do what? 7-Eleven manager. What else? Well, uh, voice work. Yeah. You know, doing commercials. I mean, that, yeah. A that's, lot of them. Uh, uh, I know a lot of guys that, that just set up a stay, Sort uh, of a freelance voice work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, I mean that, at least they're doing their own thing there. Maybe catch on at an advertising agency yeah. or, or just, it depends on how you did on the radio, what you did. And uh, how would and you a, stay, how have you stayed in radio this entire time, would you say? Luck. Serious. Really? Just, yeah. You got lucky. Yeah, well, I, I just I never went away. Yeah, and you keep like looking for those opportunities, and eventually it'll happen. And I was out of radio after you know another station. Uh, I worked at a jazz station, LOQ. They went uh, bye bye. The station was sold in 2011. So I went and did the census, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, and worked that for a yeah, while, right. and. Uh, you know, then, then. But then, how do you get back in? Are you worried that oh, you know, if I take a break, no one's going to hire me to get well, back in? Well, because I, my, I'm a little older than most oh, radio okay. guys, and they, you know, they just assume you want more money, right? Even though I don't necessarily, but 
you, you, you'd kind of price yourself out of the job. And they don't want old guys. Mm. They, they don't want people that have been around. They, no one does. They, they just want the young guys they can mold into their own thing. It's and, disturbing, actually. And, and I deal, being a bankruptcy attorney, I sit here all the time talking to guys who are literally make 50 years old. Yeah. And they're getting pushed out of jobs at 50. And they say, I, I know that it's age discrimination. They hired a 25-year-old making yep. half of what I was making. Sure. I was like, how am I going to prove it? I mean, how in the world? How do you but prove I, that? But, I know, for a, but <laughs> yeah. I know for a fact that people are getting pushed out of jobs. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's, I, it's, it's, it is tough. And, and here's what I tell my clients. I'm like, look, I know that you, you're, you're better than this, but you know, maybe you have to take a little bit less money than you think you're worth, or maybe you have to even get a job. Or reinvent yourself. Or reinvent yourself. Yeah. There you Try go. Try something else. I mean, and Mick, I, I don't think I've ever talked to you about this, but when, when my firm, when we first started in 2007, I think here, we did nothing but foreclosure defense work, right? That's all we did. People were going through foreclosure crisis. Yeah, back like, in that day, yeah. I mean, we, we, that's all we do. I had, you know, a thousand lawyers working here, and, and we did a really, really, really good job representing people through a really tough time. But then I knew the foreclosure crisis was going to go away. And I had to like sit here and have fights with myself at night by myself, thinking like, "Man, well, you got to you got to reinvent this firm somehow because the foreclosure crisis is going to go away someday." And, and you don't want to have that talk with yourself after it's gone away. You know, you have to have a little foresight. I think, right? People always need lawyers in your case. <laughs> I know, but then you know, yeah, you, you have to really reinvent yourself, you know, retrain employees to do other things or whatever. So. Well, it's it, tough. It, I think technology gives us all a, an opportunity to do more things. Yeah. It's not just one job anymore. You've got to have a couple. I agree, 100%. And so, I'm just in, always impressed with your staying power here in this industry, and I'm always impressed when someone comes in here and like, ah, you're McDonald. I like that. I mean, I, it makes me want to hug you. <laughs> Hey, okay. make sure to hug you. Cause and I'm you're, sitting you're, in front of a pink microphone. <laughs> right yeah. now. Well, hey. Alrighty then. Well, Trying anyway. to reinvent yourself. Yeah. I am. Well, you know, Welcome trying. back to the show again. It's Behind the Law on Bud 941-321-282-1055. Justin Clark McDowen. And on the screen, if you're watching at Behind the Law Radio, is the beautiful Brianna. She normally tries to hang out behind the scenes, but Allie Mack is taking a day off, apparently, right? Late or day off, Brianna? What is it? Day off. Oh, a full day off? Full day off. Oh, my God. She's earned it. <laughs> yeah. She... Stop you don't realize, folks, her. what she really does. Why are you sucking up to her on the air? <laughs> Just send an email ridiculous. with Justin's name telling her yeah. that she deserves yeah, it. Yeah, please. I, I'll respond never to see you it. Within three or four days, I'll respond to it. Or Brianna with his credit will. card, I'll attach her Christmas or bonus. Or Brianna will. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, let me talk to you about that, by the way. <laughs> We've invited our good friend today, Mike Bagley, into the studio. He is the owner and the creator of E-Static Odor Control. And I did this for a reason, Mike. Look. I have three dogs that have three cats. God, I cannot imagine that. And I have a home, you know? And I also have two little daughters, too. And I was having someone over to my house, two people last night. We were having a, a business meeting about 2019. And they're not, in fact, they've never been to my house before. And I walked in before they got there. And I was like, it smells okay to me. Yeah. Smells fine here to me, but maybe I'm used to the, the animal smell. You know, maybe I am, and I'm going to be embarrassed if they walk in. And then when they walk out of here later, after having you know, a couple glasses of wine, they get in their car, they're like, damn, do you notice the house stunk? <laughs> no one wants to hear that. You know, no one wants of to have people not. over. Maybe you didn't give them enough wine. Maybe, well, yeah, More that's, wine. That's, that's always good. No one, no one wants someone, we, no one, especially this time of year, when you're, everyone's having a holiday guest over, right, mm. Mick? Mm. No one wants you leaving the house saying, uh, they're annoying, and their house stunk. So you got three dogs and three cats. Right. There's probably one animal that's the problem. Well, the, the rest of them are, you know, just not kind, of six. Fo you know, kind of well. following along. But the one guy, the maverick, <laughs> the drape climber. It's, it's funny, Mick, that you say that because now they're all sort of individual <laughs> pain in the asses, if you will. You know yes, what I mean? Absolutely. They all have their own problems. I, I have think, a cat. But, I know what you're saying. But what do we, what do, we do, Mike Bagley, with the... With the pet odor what can we do it depends it's kind of a that's a that's a loaded question it depends I on know. how bad it is spray so, the cat maybe spray and cat. what your budget is yeah. so you know you can buy a diffuser put some oils in there try to freshen it up um how long does that, that does let's that say doesn't let, really let, take away that, and see that that's if you're in that most everything on the market you've got febreze you've got the oils the diffusers candles um 
kind of make your house smell a little Christmassy for this time of year, sure. a little bit like Thanksgiving and pumpkin during Thanksgiving, but those smells are all going to go away right. at some point. You blow out the candle, you wake up in the morning, and the smell's back. So if it's to a point to where either A, you can't take it any longer, and you need a permanent fix, or we were talking about earlier, houses on the market, trying to sell your house, you're not getting any interest because of the smells. You need a permanent solution to get that house off the market, turn the house so you can do whatever you're going to do with the money. That's when we would come in. Mm -hmm. And as long as the source is gone, and I can't reiterate that enough, yeah. you as long figure as the out source where it's is coming removed, from. Yeah. when we come in and spray, it is a permanent fix for the house. Is it, all right, so let's go back to the, You've said Febreze three times now, I oh think. Oh, my goodness. So Febreze, this drives me crazy. Sorry, can, it's we, a little bit of a pet peeve. We, we can go to Publix and buy Febreze. because We've all bought it before, right? You spray that... Stuff. I, 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 you stuff on there. Chemicals. And it smells good for a minute or two. But how long does that last? How long does that really I think hide in, the smell? In some cases... Bathroom smells. Febreze makes it worse. <laughs> there you go with the bathroom. <laughs> it makes it worse. Yeah. Yeah? In some cases. Not all cases. Right. Some cases, and I've heard of this happening, there's a showing, and the house noticeably smells, and again, I've heard of, can't confirm, but spray the house with Febreze, maybe a case of Febreze as far as I know, so potential buyers walk in, oh, I had nice, the house has a nice smell to it. Um, or you have guests over, house smells okay for the time that there are people in the house, but the next day you're kind of back to square one. I think when people go to buy a house, they're looking at a house, you really ought to go back in a day or two mm -hmm. and see yeah, what I think else, that's a good idea. what's different. Right. Unannounced at that, yeah. just to kind of see, yeah. see how it's going. I, I think going that's a good idea, too. And I also think that if you, know, if you are in the market for selling your home currently, we think about if you go to Las Vegas, they, they pump oxygen in to keep you in the casinos. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, there are also smells that you can, you can have in a, in a home that's yeah. on the market for an open house that you can use to actually make a buyer want to buy your house yeah. more or pay more for Get your you in the house mood. Yeah. than other homes. Let's, let's ask that question to Mike Bagley right on the other side of this break. One more segment ahead of Behind the Law, Bud, 941. That would be the question. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, I don't know. There's so many ways. And, and really, we could talk about the difference between a carpet cleaner yeah. and you guys. If you, well, that's, that's good. cool. Yeah. I mean, because I, you know, I used to have a cleaning business, a small business, mm -hmm. and I would do real estate move-ins, move-outs. And sometimes the, there was a stink, and it's like, oh, I don't know what to do, but let's try the carpets. And it... it it very rarely worked, yeah, really, yeah. it seems like. Yeah, because it'll soak it into the padding, and then you're... Well, yeah, we can explain that process. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. While Brianna's looking at Justin's emails. <laughs> yeah, right? Boy, there's, there's, right a, well, there's a good one there. Last segment, you ready? <laughs> you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. One final segment of Behind the Law, Bud 94.1. Justin Clark, McDolan, and the beautiful Brianna in the house with you today. Allie Mack will be back with us tomorrow, right? Back tomorrow? We hope so. Hey, don't uh, you tell us. Brianna, hey, don't shake your head at me. What's up? She'll be back tomorrow or no? She will be back tomorrow, okay. Justin. So she's not mad at me. She's just out of the office. I didn't she's, say that. She's okay. busy. No, I she's said, mad at me. Oh, oh, oh. I did not now, say that. Now, why is she, did mad, why is she mad at me? There you go. Why did you say that? Now he's yeah. going to... Oh. Why is she mad at me? <laughs> she's not go. mad oh. at you. Mad it's always you. something in my life. We love you. We do. <laughs> I'm going to be sure to tune in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah please do. Really? We'll figure no, out why she's mad at me yeah. tomorrow. Unbelievable. Keep you occupied. <laughs> well, I guarantee you we'll spend some time her explaining what happened. Fireworks before New Year's. No doubt about it. absolutely. See what goes. No doubt about it. Joined today by Mike Bagley. He's the owner of E-Static Odor Control. Look, does your house smell? Are you looking to sell your home? And maybe you're used to that odor in the house, but it could really devalue your home. If you're going to uh, be in the market to sell your house, let's talk about how to make your house pleasant. And talk to me about that, Mike, for a second, because... You go to Las Vegas, you go to the casinos, they pump oxygen in to make you stay in the casinos longer, right? But you, you go to an open house, they, they give you chocolate chip cookies to make you stay longer. 
Is there a way to actually make this house smell better for an open house or for potential buyers yeah. to actually make them want to buy the house or pay more for this home? So, yeah, yeah really. most, of, most of the things that are on the market right now are pretty much masking agents. Um, we've been talking about Febreze and some of the different tactics that are used. Um, they'll mask the smell for a little while, and then the smell comes back. The other option is a lot of people think, well, the only option I have now because the it, candles aren't working or yeah. the spray's not working, I have to renovate the house. I need to pull up the carpet. I need to repaint the walls. And you're spending thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to try to fix a problem that we can come in for a fraction of that price and take care of for you. Mm. And it's a per it, would you call it a permanent fix or it, in as most close cases as you can in get? most cases it is and we have a 30 day guarantee so if the smell isn't gone within 30 days we'll come back and, and do reapply mm -hmm. the antimicrobial spray and the freight to do the whole process over again from A to Z you know I've never run into a company that does just the smell mm -hmm. I mean we I had a, cl a cleaning business for a while and we would just call the the uh, carpet cleaner and and it worked sometimes, sometimes yeah. it didn't, but you know, I did the best I could, but I've never yeah. run into a company like yours. And sometimes the carpet cleaning will work in some situations. If you have stains, for example, one thing to be careful of is that I'm finding if, say, you have pet, you have pet urine in the carpet, mm -hmm. it's not overly saturated, but the smell is there. If a company comes in to clean the carpets first, that smell can't, not saying it will, but it can actually penetrate the padding underneath the carpet. And, that's and then when you have you've a got to replace uh, the carpet yeah. and the padding. Yeah. Um, we have had a house um, where the urine had actually saturated into the padding. So they, all they had to do was replace the padding. It's a fraction of the price mm -hmm. of replacing the entire carpet. Mm -hmm. So they replaced the padding. We came in, treated the carpet, and the smell was gone after that. Mm -hmm. But they, and that's how we found out about the carpet cleaning situation. And sometimes it does work, so I'm I'm not trying so the to spongy like pad is yeah, what, what really it can, soaks it up. If that gets up. saturated, then it then it's very it's almost impossible to get out at that point. So and the cleaning the carpet with the amounts of solution that they use mm -hmm. can actually push the urine further into and into the padding. Ugh. Instead of it just remaining in the carpet. Well, that, if it's in the carpet, we can take yeah, care of it, no problem. Right. Once it's in the padding, it becomes a whole different animal at most, that point. Most carpeting, though, has that uh, solid like backing. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. what you're talking about. And, and, yeah. and urine can even penetrate that. Yeah. Oh, it, with enough mm. of it, if it's neglected for such a long time. Like Justin's can, animals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you now, if you're ready, Mick. So I have a, uh, a beagle. Okay. And two chihuahuas. Oh. Well, now and, that you... And uh, so the Chihuahuas don't, they don't understand going outside as much as other dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this, like, the, the pee smell can be overwhelming at times. It really can. I mean, it is Inside terrible. or outside? Look, I'm just telling you. Anywhere. Okay. I, I, I'm just telling you that Ooh. it can be overwhelming at times. Yeah. And Chihuahuas aren't necessarily, they're more like cats. I mean, they, mm. But they don't not, use a litter box. But they're far more yappy than any <laughs> cat <laughs> would be. You should come over to my house this weekend and, oh, and say hi no, and see what now, happens. Now I'm thinking about it. I'll know when you're there. <laughs> and they come crazy. up and they lick you. And they, not really. No, no. They want to they kill you. They, yeah, yeah, they, 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 you. They, they look at you like they want you dead. Little ankle oh, yeah. biters. Yeah. Yeah. No, they won't bite your ankle, but they will look at you like they want you dead. Both of them. It, it, you know, so the Chihuahuas do occasionally, let's say, use the restroom in the house. I mean, is it fixable? Yes, and we, one of the houses, that, one of the first houses I did was in Apollo Beach, just south of Tampa, and that was kind of what I've been describing. They've had the market, the house on the market. It's right on the beach. I mean, it's a, it's an awesome location, Yeah. and they just had a hard time getting people to stay in the house for more than 10 minutes at a time. Nobody wanted to even talk Boy, about that. Boy, that was a right? bad smell. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> It was nice because when I went there, I mean, it was nice once I put a mask on, but it was nice when I got there because the house was vacant. And so I just had a field day, just spray. I put yeah. it on Everywhere. extra spray. Right, right. And um, it was the day before Thanksgiving, rushed in that night because they had showings on Friday and then on Monday and Tuesday. And he said afterwards, because I like to follow up with my customers. So I sure. was texting and we were calling back and forth. And he said, nobody, after I went in, nobody went, nobody made a mention of the pet smells anymore. Good. 
I mean, that's huge for. I mean, you're job about, completed. You're, you're talking about a you know a house. Uh, this is significant value to someone. Um, for for not a lot of money, to probably have someone come in and and, and spray like e static and. And it's environmentally friendly. Yeah, the, that's the nice the, thing about the treatment. it. And that was really the turn on for me when I was thinking right. about starting the company down here, looking at the solution, what type of solution do we use, and knowing that it's environmentally fr- uh, friendly. And I've got pets and kids as well. So knowing that within a couple hours, if that, maybe an hour once the solution starts to dry a little bit, I can bring my kids and my dog right. back in without any harm to them. What sort of times does it take you to come into a, a vacant home you know, that you're hired to come in and spray, essentially, whatever you call it. How long does it take you? It, on average, and again, it depends because you never know what you're going to walk right. into. And yeah. a lot of times, and I get it, people try to minimize the smell in the house. And mm-hmm. you walk in, you're like, oh, my goodness. Of course. But normally, it's It's say, not that, Mick, it's it's not not that bad. It's not that in bad. In fact, you can barely smell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You walk in with the freaking gas mask on. Yeah, I understand. Like, where's my we albuterol get sprayer? Yeah. Um, so... But normally with a 3,000-square-foot home, um, depending on what's going on, we can usually be done with a 3,000-square-foot home in about an hour. I spend a little bit extra time. I like to clean up. Sometimes if you have sliding glass doors, the spray will kind of bounce off and and hit the windows or some um, sliding glass doors. So I'll wipe all that up if there's wood floors or tile. Spend a little extra time to just do a little attention to detail. So it may take a little bit longer than that, but the spraying portion takes about an hour. Now, if you have wood floors, now the, the slats... In between the slats, mm-hmm. I would think that pet smells or whatever Actually, the, gets down in there. The home, I, the customer I was talking about earlier with the cat smell that they're writing us into the con, into the contract, they believe that the cat urine is in the grout of the tile. Ah, the worst place. So oh we will God. be spraying grout. Mm-hmm. So. Because it just sinks right uh, in. Oh. But I've got my little scrub brush. Um, last week I was scrubbing nicotine off of window seals. So, hey, whatever it takes to get the job done, we'll do it. There you go. Cigarettes. <sighs> yeah. Cigarettes and pet smell. Yeah. Those are the two yeah. worst. And food. Food can be overpowering as well, depending on What do you mean food? Like, where, where does the food show up? The food, it's mostly, it's, and I have to be very, very careful here. All right. <laughs> um, but it's usually ethnic food. So... <laughs> Um, I'll use my Spicy. Just, just for you know not hurting anybody's feelings who might be listening. Yeah. So which ethnic group do you hate again? <laughs> <laughs> so for myself, Admit it. Okay. again, I mentioned that I, you know my senses or my smell is a little. Don't talk sensitive. about biscuits and gravy right now, my man. So, that, I'm from Tennessee, bro. <laughs> uh, my wife is from the Philippines, oh, and okay. they cook seafood. Yeah. Delicious, and, uh, but just smelly. the smell of seafood will make me nauseous. Will make me nauseous. Break Whoa. out in a cold sweat. Really, I can't eat it. Can't smell it. Some sort of weird allergy. So I'll again for so argument's no, sake. I'll, there are others, but that's one where you do that enough over the years, it's going to soak into the walls, sure. the cabinets, and things like that. You may not realize it, like you mentioned earlier. It just may be a subtle smell. You've lived there for ten years, so you don't really realize that that smell exists until you move out and somebody else is looking at your home or until you marry an american <laughs> or that too so well, that you smell. know you're you're perfect for the job because your smell you your sense of smell is very sensitive it's ridiculous yeah. and, and and allergies yeah. play into it so that's that's it in a nutshell that's what you don't want yeah is the stink and the allergy it, uh, if trigger. i was a real estate agent right now <clears throat> listening to this program listen up because You've gone to a lot of listings before, and you're like, look, you, you walk in, and it's an uncomfortable conversation with your new client, right, the seller. And you're like, ah, I just want to be honest with you. I want to list your home. I'm going to list your home. But it kind of stinks. You know, it, it, it doesn't smell that good. It's an uncomfortable conversation for your seller. We get that. You know, we have a lot of listing agents who are friends of ours. We have a solution now. I yeah. mean, now we have a solution. I've never heard of a company like E-Static Odor Control owned by Mike Bagley. How do we reach out to you if I'm a realtor or even an owner of a home who's looking to sell my house? How do I reach out? Best way is uh, you re- reach me by phone any time of the day, seven days a week. 407-697-1291 is the number. Beautiful. Hey. I mean, look, don't you think this changes the value of your house, Mick? Oh, absolutely. If, you, if you've if, got if, a big problem, if, yeah, it does. If you were going to go walk into a home, and buy it. Hey, oh, you know, I'll, I'll pay 400, 500 grand for this place, but damn, it stinks. Yeah. No, not normally you don't think that. No. 
It's it's in your mind. Yeah, the first the, impression. The if first it's a impression stinky when you walk one, in. If you have bad. a stinky house, you're not buying a it's stinky bad. house. No, Mike, I wouldn't. Mike, do people buy stinky houses? I wouldn't personally <laughs> buy a stinky <laughs> house, but I'm sure some people do. <laughs> hoping, maybe hoping one day that <laughs> it will go nice. away. It'll go away, yeah. yeah. And it never does. But, never yeah, does. I, I'm not buying a stinky house. Well, if you That's don't, so if, it, you know, if, if you want to get full value for your home, not sell a stinky house, call Mike. Bagley, please. E static order control. Phone number one more time. 407 697 1291. For the beautiful Brianna, for Allie Mack, who was running a little late today. Mick Dolan. Just a little. I don't know much. I know you don't. But I do know one little thing. <laughs> What's that? I'll see you right back here tomorrow night on Bud 941. Thank you very much.